Uh, so this talk is going to be in English for the recording uh, purposes. So I'm David, welcome to my talk. Uh, this talk is about uh, hot sauce. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'm a part of uh, Pixel Bar, uh, a hackerspace in Rotterdam, and um, recently we visited uh, CCC and before we visited other camps and congresses. And I was always into uh, like food and well, I love cooking. Um, who here loves cooking as well? Somebody? Okay. Who loves eating? eating yeah. <laughs> okay, everybody. Great, great. Then this is the talk for you. Um, but uh, I was going to f uh, the food hacking base, and on camps there's like a, a huge food culture. So uh, I started to uh, do some experimenting myself as well. Um, and actually, um, uh, I wanted to make my own hot sauce because I also started to make some uh, ramen. Uh, if you don't know what ramen is, it looks like the picture on the right. Um, it's basically a Japanese dish, a broth, a soup, whatever you call it, with noodles. Uh, but I wanted to give it some kick, I spice it up. So I made my own hot sauce as well. Um, but uh, during my time at CCC, I got some inspiration from a, a, a few people, uh, uh, namely Lotte, and uh, she talked about fermentation and the fermentation process, and it, she, she got me triggered. Um, and she also, s like, CCC is actually uh, during the uh, uh, end of December, so it's a, a very cold season, and it's not the best time to grow your own plants. However, I did it. Uh, I wanted to start from scratch and grow my own peppers because the ingredients are the most important part of the hot sauce. And there are just a few ingredients, and I'll explain that later. Um, so I started with winter sowing. This concept is basically, um, well, creating like a, a small box where it regulates the temperature in the box. You can put it outside, it can be snowy, it can be warm, it doesn't matter. As long as there is sunlight and um, the plants and some water in there then you're all good to go. And it's, uh, it's a really great concept to start growing like in the end of December or January and grow your own peppers. And I'll uh, show you the, the where you get can get the pepper seeds uh, later. Um, but basically the process looks like this. You have them in the box. You, I grew them on my balcony. I didn't need a lot of space for them. Um, and they grew amazingly well. Um, uh, so, and, and this is obviously the, yeah, the main ingredient in hot sauce, so you just need very good peppers. Obviously, you can get them in the grocery stores, but they, they taste a bit dull, and you don't want those. Um, and you can experiment with lots of varieties, obviously. Um, so the most fun important part is to, to get your own, own peppers. And obviously, this is a hacker conference, so I also want to uh, do some monitoring of the, the peppers. Um, so I created a sensor box, and actually, uh, the sensor box, I'm, I'm not a hardware expert, um, nor I'm a food expert. I just like to hobby. Um, but I created this uh, a sensor box, which basically registers lights, uh, humidity, um, and uh, the temperature. Yes, temperature. Um, so I can see what, what happens to the peppers. Um, so actually, last year here on Hacker Hotel, I uh, just wait, what's happening? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Last, last year on Hacker Hotel, I, uh, I visited the workshop on the Things Network, and I started uh, uh, researching that, and I created this basically this uh, s uh, basic thing where I could monitor these peppers uh, on my own and actually trigger an alert when the humidity gets too low. So I knew what was happening, and I got an alert. Last summer, however, it was so warm, it was so, uh, so it wasn't really required to... to get it inside, uh, the humidity was perfect, so actually I it was basically useless. So I wouldn't recommend doing this, but it was fun to do, and yeah, it's a bit of a hacker mindset to, to automate things, so maybe next year I'll create my own watering system. Um, so at, at the end of the, the line, I had three and a half kilos of peppers, Fresno uh, peppers, they are from the Californian region, and they're very easy to grow here in the Netherlands. Um, actually so easy that I sometimes Forgot to give them water, or I threw even some seeds away with some dirt, and it was not. Uh, there was no uh, like not a lot of sunlight. There was not a lot of uh, humi humidity, but they started growing anyway. So they're like very very easy to grow, um, and they're like uh, similar to uh, jalapeno uh, peppers, um, but they have a bit more of, of a kick. Uh, it's around uh, 2,500 to 10,000 uh, Scoville heat units. So. Uh, it's not. It's not like there's tons of hot uh, hot sauces out there that have, are 
immensely, immensely hot. So this hot sauce is not immensely hot, um, but it's a bit more spicy than the jalapenos. Um, so what I did, the next process is like find a good recipe, obviously, and put it all together. Main ingredient, again, peppers. Um, you need uh, the good peppers and then vinegar, uh, salt, sugar, and I use xanthan gum. Uh, xanthan gum is basically a, 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 a fermented sugar. You can get it like in the um, like the special shops where they have like the green uh, stuff. I, I'm not sure how to say it in English. Um, but it's basically a special shop. If you look for it, you can find it everywhere. And it basically it's a thickener for creating a smooth texture for your sauce. Um, you can use other ingredients as well, but this is the like very easy to do. And a pro tip is to use gloves because the first time I did this, I didn't use gloves. <laughs> yes, for days. You don't get rid of it for days, uh, if you cut a lot of peppers, at least. Um, and the most fun part and exciting part for me to learn was the uh, fermentation part. So for the fermentation part, I also used uh, um, uh, carrots to tone down the heat. And the, the carrots, basically, they were just a filler. So it, cre it, cre uh, it creates a more or orange color. Um, in the sauce, but you can add anything you'd like, like pineapple, whatever you like. Pineapple, however, like the disadvantage of pineapple, it's a fresh ingredient, and so you really want it to have freshness in there. So if you want to keep it for a long time, pineapple is not really the way to go. Carrots are easy and they can, like, they don't go bad for a long period of time. Uh, but the fermentation, like, I, I took a week to ferment, and basically what I did, I, uh, I got this. Uh, this canister from our hackerspace. They also do beer brewing there. Uh, I s stole it. <laughs> and uh, I, I put it back though. Um, basically plastic container. You fill it up um, with water and salt. Uh, and uh, you put in the f peppers, the, the carrots, and then you make sure you use a, a cheesecloth or uh, I, I use a baking uh, paper. I put it on top. So it gets submerged because the important part is that everything keep, uh, stays submerged because otherwise they'll, well, you get the, diff the, the wrong fungi up there. Um, and you want to look at it daily basically to make sure there's no weird stuff growing on the top. Um, the important part is to, to look at it, smell it. And if, it's, if it doesn't look or look right, then you need to stir up or uh, skim the top basically. But um, what my trick was is to um, fill up bags with water and then lay it on top because then it's just, you don't really need to, it will stay submerged. Um, and it's a very easy, easy thing to do. So for about five to seven days, you keep it in a canister and then it's properly fermented. Some people do it for a very long period of time. You can do that as well. Um, but then you need like the, the thing on top to, uh, well, you can, the submerging part is still also, also usable, but mostly uh, you keep an, have an airlock or something to make it more easy for yourself. So. Um, it's easier to do. Um, so basically, it's it's very simple. Uh, it doesn't require a lot, and it's just a few ingredients. Uh, but I did have some lessons along the way. Um, and I'll, I'll share the recipe with you if you really want to dive into it. Uh, I'll put it on, on online. Um, but the things I learned was the Fresno peppers uh, really grow well, like I said, uh, despite the conditions. Uh, so last summer was a very good summer, uh, so there was a lot of sunlight which is very nice. So they need a lot of sunlight. That's the only downside. So if you want to grow it, use the winter sowing during the winter months. or um, And then if the sun is nice outside, then they'll grow pretty perfectly. And so Dutch weather is actually pretty perfect too to grow. Um, the hardware, well, if you want to try that, it's also open source. I'll, I'll, I'll show, share the link later. Uh, but if you use, uh, well, your soil has like a, um, acid in there and so it eats your hardware so if you use the cheap uh, temperature sensors or the things you put in your plant pots they they can last for a po probably a couple of weeks but if you well if you want to grow peppers from seeds to a full plant um, it will take well a couple of months so though it sounds interesting to buy like a standard thing out of the box from Adafruits or something but um, I used a mesh coated uh, a uh, temperature sensor for in the ground, for any humidity sensor, but during like a week of powder outage uh, on my balcony, like the whole thing was like, 
gone, basically. So it's, uh, it eats your hardware. Um, and then I, what I also didn't think about, like the sensor box, I put it in the ground on my balcony, and then the plant started to grow up. So it's cool that you have a, a light sensor in there, but it doesn't work after a certain period of time anymore. Um, so uh, I, I hope next year I can like do a watering system, you know, and automate all that stuff. But that's not the important stuff. The important part is obviously the the thing itself. Um, and so I have these bottles here. Uh, it's called Simon's Hot Sauce, by the way. Um, and the reason why I call it Simon's Hot Sauce is because I had a cat named Simon, and, and so this is basically a tribute to him. But there are other cats, cats that uh, call called Simon. Um, well, Simon's cat is not really. Uh, called Simon here, but there's also Simon the Cat, and that's an old story um, on a Navy sh SEAL sh uh, ship. Um, and he was basically the mascot because, because he ate all the rats on a ship. So he's like a famous hero on a ship. So I named it after, uh, after those cats um, and did some uh, artwork, uh, artwork of my own. Uh, so there's the logo on there, also very important. It looks nice, the bottle is nice. Um, and I, I sold them for like eight euro each. Um, and I made around, I think, like 60 or 70 bottles from three and a half kilos of peppers. Uh, so that's quite a lot, actually. Um, and uh, the bottling process is also something to be careful at, because uh, what you want to do is uh, you want to boil the bottles up front, uh, because otherwise, well, well, you get, again, the wrong fungi in here. Um, so to preserve it, you want to boil it. Uh, but with these bottles, I bought them at Braumart, <coughs> uh, a Dutch supplier of lots of uh, ferment uh, projects and uh, uh, stuff. Um, well, I boiled uh, the caps as well, but the plastic is, well, it's plastic. That's so it's, it's, I still need to figure out that part out. So you want to boil the bottle so, um, you, and you close it properly so you can keep it for like a long period of time, time, probably a year or longer. Um, and these are probably now five months, four months old, maybe. Um, but yeah, they, they, these are the things. And what I'm also going to do is, because I was like so obsessed by these cats now, and I know it's quite, quite random, um, I, start, I decided to donate half the money to cat foundations here in the Netherlands, because I, s I sold them all. Um, <laughs> pretty quickly. I still have a, a few left because I talked with Dimitri and he said, yeah, you need to explain it more. So I, I kept a few for this talk. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have a tasting session because that's the most important part. Um, uh, but before I do, uh, I keep experimenting with food. And so uh, at our hackerspace, um, this is also quite random. Um, <coughs> we had a thing called the disappointment box, which was basically, if you know Kinder Surprise, they have like a piece of a plastic in there that you can put together. And so I was thinking like, okay, what can we do with chocolate? I want to do something with chocolate as well. Um, so this is like a, a big, big surprise for you guys. But I have uh, a hacker surprise um, for you all, um, which is basically, uh, well, we did it uh, together at Pixel Bar, uh, a Kinder Surprise egg made of chocolate, similar to the Kinder Surprise. Uh, with a different surprise inside. So I'll, I'll, I'll hand it out as well. Uh, and uh, that's actually <coughs> my talk. Um, so we'll, we'll go over to the tasting session. Uh, so do you guys want to taste some? Or yes? Perfect, perfect. Then I'll hand some out. And if there are questions, actually, uh, you can ask them right now. Yes. So the question is, can you use cucumber? Um, well, I think you can throw in anything you want, but uh, I think cucumber is a bit m too uh, watery, watery um, and tasteless, maybe even. Uh, but obviously, you can try. Uh, like you can, you can throw in anything if you want. Um, but I think the most important part is also to look for a texture. Um, so if you use pineapple, you get a very different texture. Um, and carrots, if you blend that up well uh, with uh, the peppers, you get like, nah, I'll show you, it's a very smooth, smooth texture. Ah, it's not even coming out. There we go. Okay, if you can see it, like it's a very nice, smooth texture. 
and it's actually a bit sour. So what the fermentation process does is actually it creates more sourness to it, uh, more dep depth, what most people call refer to. Um, and I, it smells, it smells pretty strong. Um, and it also it's there's apple vinegar in there, so you can use like fruits are very good to do actually. So I used apple vinegar, so it's also a bit more sour. And the vinegar preserves as well, so it's also a preserver, which is a really good tip to use. Um, but let's taste some. Let's I think that's. I brought some chicken. Well, they made it here in the kitchen. I didn't have any forks and, and things, but I'll, I'll just uh, hand on a few around. Oops. Maybe you can pass it along. Thanks. Uh, any more questions? No more questions. Is anyone interested in creating their own hot sauce? Did I inspire them? Yes? <laughs> nice. Nice. Did you ever try it already or? Um, yeah, I tried it with brown and some dates as well. Ah, but okay. Uh, yes. It's my older uh, yes. So that's awesome. Yeah. Same um, process. Yep, yeah. correct. So close yep. To close it, airlock. Yeah, yeah the traditional pots. Uh, yeah. I forgot. Never did that though. Um, yeah. But I would like to do my own sauerkraut as well at some point. Oh, it's, it's quite easy. Yeah. <laughs> and it's way better than the ones in the supermarkets, probably. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'd love to do it. It's not very spicy. It's I, I use it like ketchup, actually. Uh, really? So <laughs> it's very uh, easy to to get it on anything. Um, oh, and I'll I'll hand out the uh, hacker surprise. Do you guys want one or? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, and the rest are pe of the people are gonna pay. So they are normally one coin. What? Oh yeah. Can you help me hand in the dart? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So we did it at Pixel Bar. So this is like a collaborative project. Um, which and I have stickers and anything, um, and I still have a few bottles left. So if you want a bottle, uh, it's eight euros, and half of it are, is going to the Cat Foundation. Um, and tell me what you think about the sauce. So for my next project, for next iteration, I'll improve it. Is it good? <laughs> it's not too spicy, right? It's just uh, it's just good enough. Yeah, perfect, awesome. And a chocolate, oh, it's hard to do actually. It's uh, that's why it's uh. A profession on its own, <laughs> uh, and I hope next time it's uh, it will be even better. Do you like it? So, so thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> awesome.